how to set up a Worcester Bosch CDA. My name's Alan Hart and today we've got the opportunity to have Paul Kelly back with us on the channel. He's a Worcester Bosch engineer and he's shown us how advanced the Worcester Bosch Green Star, the Worcester Bosch CDA boiler is and, uh, and what some of the things that you can do with the Worcester Bosch CDA. For instance, you can range rate them and that there's lots of other things that they've got built in that that is that is really good. So it's going to show you some of them things. Also, um, there's a manual that you can download from Worcester. So I'm going to try and I'm going to try and add a link below in here. Um, I don't know if I can add the link or not, but I'm going to try and do that. Um, if not, you can click onto the Worcester Bosch website and you can find the chart so that when you scroll through the display you'll be able to see which settings do what and it'll help you. Um, yeah, I'm babbling on a bit now. What I'll do now, bob over to Paul and, and he'll show us this CDI. This video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision. Please comply with the current regulations at the time. How to set up a CDI for different user functions. Now the thing is on the Worcester CDI it's a really good boiler in a, in a lot of ways. Um, you can set it to range rate even. Uh, as you know on the older boilers, older conventional boilers, you could alter the pressure on the gas valve, different millibar ratings to set it to range rate um, to alter to whatever you've got on the system be it one two three radiators to a full system to nine radiators nine radiators or something all on kilowatt output on this boiler you've got user settings and you've got two different menus installer menus um, mainly Worcester engineers know the way around the menus but if you download the engineers service manual which is on the Worcester website you can download it for free cost you nothing download it as a PDF put it on your phone it's a very invaluable tool uh, it tells you a lot of things on faults on how to clear them if you got an EA fault for example uh, tells you step by step how to work through what to check what components to check um, and it's a really good tool uh, the service manual so I'll go through a few basic menus uh, to go through which might help you on the job right to access the uh, menus all you do is that you've got a set of four keys down here you've got your on off key your burner on light indicator your service menu key and you've got your chimney sweep function which is for servicing mode basically all you do is you press your service key and hold it for 10 seconds wait for the light to turn orange on the key When it does let go and you'll come up with menus here now you go up and down through your menus with your eco and your holiday key as you see you can go up and down depending on what the relevant menu is 1a is your output menu it'll tell you your output in central heating mode this is a 38 kilowatt cdi so it'll give you 38 kilowatts in hot water only in heating it gives you 30 kilowatts of output so for instance I've worked out my system and my system 16.3 kilowatts of total heat output so I don't need a full 100% of output from my boiler at 30 kilowatts so what you do is when you're in that menu 1a you then press chimney sweep key once it'll display to 60 that will tell you a percentage from 0 to 100 on what the output of the boiler is. <laughs> so 16 kilowatts roughly worked it out. 15 kilowatts will be 50 will be 50%. 30 kilowatts will be 100%. So I'm losing 16 kilowatts, 16.4 kilowatts of useful heat output. So I've dropped my output down to 60, and you can go up or down on your output whatever you need 
So I left mine at 60%, which is about right. And all you do is then you press the chimney sweep key once more, wait for the two brackets to appear. That's it stored in the memory of the boiler. So the boiler knows that its output then is 60%. It won't go above 60% even if I turn the thermostat to maximum, its maximum will go to 60% of its useful output. Really useful if you want to put a CDI on a not so big system. Um, it's really good for that. So it is one of the one of the few modern boilers that you can range rate. You can do it on Aristons and a lot of different boilers. Um, some of them have the menus, some of them are only installer only or manufacturer only, but it's a good menu to know all about. Next, we've got menu 5A. If you look in your engineer's service book, it'll be a service reminder, 5A. What normally, what you can have sometimes on CDIs, people will call you out for a fault, they're saying, oh, the display's showing an SE, then going back to a number, then an SE again. Nothing wrong, the boiler will still work. All it will tell you is that it's reached the end of its, its useful cycle. It will go through, I think it's 2,470 starts. That's lighting the burner. And it's roughly worked out on a year's usage. So after that, after it reaches that 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 top amount, it'll go to a SE code. Um, easy way to clear the code, you go up to 5A on your menus, you cycle through all the way to 5A. You press your chimney sweep key, and it'll go to naught, and you press it once more till the brackets appear, and let go. That's your service reminder reset. It goes from zero hours then until it goes up again to 2,370 starts. It'll tell you that the boiler needs servicing again. It's quite a good thing because a service reminder will tell you, gives you an indication if it's been serviced correctly or not. If it's been years since it's been serviced, more often than not you'll find service reminder will be on. It's one to be made aware of. Next we've got service function 5B, which is your fan overrun time. Uh, it's quite a important one this, um, and it's a fault which can show up a lot of EA faults. Sometimes you find that the boiler is showing an EA fault, it can be a host of different faults. It can be a block siphon, it can be faulty electrodes, it can be gas air mixture. Lots of different things, um, bearing plate, if your bearing plate sticking. Now this is one solution which should really, what we say is dry out your bearing plate. So really, um, it's factory set on zero three. If you press service key once, mine set at nine, which is 90 seconds. Yep, um, oh nine, that that all goes back to how long it is in seconds. 03 is 30 seconds, 04, 40 seconds, and so on and so forth. Should set it really onto 12, 120 seconds, uh, which is two minutes. What happens is, is that inside the burner, you've got, uh, sorry, inside the fan assembly, you've got the bearing plate, which is a rubber flap. And sometimes they get condensation on them and the condensation can stick and make the bearing plate stick. You get like a bit of a bump and a bang when it lights and it makes like a fluttering noise when it lights. If you put your fan speed up to 120, your fan overrun time, sorry, your fan overrun to 120, it'll run over on your fan for 120 seconds after a heating or hot water cycle. So it'll run on and it'll dry the bearing plate with the fan. It doesn't mean that the gas is passing, it's just the fan is overrunning and it'll overrun for 120 seconds rather than 30. And it gives it a better chance for the bearing plate to be dried out and stops these intermittent EA faults. Once again, press the service key, wait for the brackets, and that's stored. So that means that your fan overrun time is sorted. Thank you very much for that, Paul. Um, yeah, that was were, that were brilliant. Um, if you if you're a trainee, please come over to our training group. Paul's in there as well, um, and we we're just trying to between us trying to help new people into the industry 
trying to help people that are in the industry that that maybe just need a little bit of a you know bit of a help um so yeah come over to our training group and and we'll try and help and support each other best we can um on the menus that paul just shown us there's lots and lots of other options in there so as i said download the manual from rather the worcester bosch um, website i will try it as i say i'll try and add it in here but if not um, bob over to worcester bosch website download the manual um, or the other thing you could do as well is go on a worcester bosch training course um, which any of the manufacturers the training courses are always very very good so if you're a new recruit into the industry i would very very strongly advise you to go on all the manufacturers training courses as many as as many as you can um, because that's where you will learn um, or you will get the best knowledge and experience because often when you go out with other plumbers or gas engineers sometimes they may be stuck in the ways a little bit um, and it's always good to to see things in multiple from multiple different places and then you can you then yourself can um, find your own way I suppose but yeah my advice go on as many of them manufacturer training courses as possible and I hope this was of some use if it were as always if you could please like somewhere down there whichever side it is um, add a comment even if you just put thanks for the video or something like that or thank you Paul or whatever you know just to give us a bit of a a bit of a boost really to you know we put a lot, a lot of effort in into these videos and also if you can share these videos into any places where there's um, apprentices or, or new people into the industry um, that'd be great thank you so much for watching